Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Rockwell, which is a very interesting, I guess kind of semi-cooperative game, all about running a mining operation or competing mining operations on this really cool circular board that's modular, it's uh, composed of all these different pieces that create a... Uh, series of rings heading all the way down to the center of the earth and in this game every player like I said runs a mining company with four mining crews that can basically run all over the map and try to dig up zinc, copper, silver and gold and occasionally have to work with each other to achieve that goal always with the intent of coming out on top because there can be only one winner. So Ah, oh, this is a tricky one to try and run through, but I'll do my best. Let's just go on ahead and jump right into it, though. As you can see, I've got this set up for a two-player game. And in a two-player game, where I'm the green player, Jen's the purple player, there will be a third dummy player, which will be the white player. And at the beginning of the game, everybody starts with their little board. And I haven't bought any upgrades yet. I've just got my four crews in each of the four corners of the board. Everybody starts with 3000 bucks. Three, is it zinc? It's either zinc or nickel, I don't remember. Maybe it's zinc, well, there we go. Three blue cubes, two brown cubes, which is the copper, and then one silver and no gold. You know, Jen, she's starting with exactly the same thing. And the very first thing that happens every round is there is a blind bid for turn order. What that means is everybody has to, you know, figure out what, and I should say this game comes with really big screens that you normally use to hide all your stuff from everybody else, so nobody knows how much money or cubes you've got. I'm not going to bother with that because, of course, I'm playing for two players and I know what everybody has, but normally this would be hidden information. Everybody behind their screens, you know, takes however much they want to bid, you know, and holds it out there and then reveals all at the same time. Now, the interesting thing about this bid, well, there's two things about this bid that's interesting. One, you can bid your money or your cubes because all the cubes have a defined value. The blue cubes, whatever it is, zinc or nickel, are worth 400, brown cubes are 600. Uh, silver cubes are 800 and gold cubes are 1,000. So if I wanted, I could just like bid one blue cube and that's the equivalent of 400 bucks. So everybody's gonna bid and reveal at the same time and, and whoever bids highest will be, get to be first player. But here's the tricky thing. Every bid, whether you win or lose, is going to be lost. So, you know, if I bid 500 and Jen bids 600, she gets first player and I got nothing for my 500 bucks. So, you have to be really, really careful about, um, you know, bidding because uh, I am, it's nothing's more painful than spending a lot of money and getting nothing for it. You just throw it all away. But anyway, we're going to start with that. Each, Jen and I are each going to do a blind bid. And now, randomly, as it stands right now, I am the first player. You can see I've got my marker on the first player marker, the second player. And by the way, I can flip all these boards over to have the other side of the boards are for three and four player games. Right now, I've got the board set up for um, you know two and for a two player game. So currently, I'm the first player. If both Jen and I bid nothing, I'll just hold on to first player. So really, the onus is on her to bid a little bit higher. But I would love to hold on to my first player. So let's see. What the heck? I will bid. Nah, I'll bid a, a blue cube and a hundred. So that's the equivalent of five hundred bucks. That's what I'm bidding. So I hold it out there and I wait for Jen to do the same. And let's see what's she gonna do. She will. Um, she'll take this and this. Okay. And so she puts her fist out too. I've already I reveal my fist, which shows you know five hundred bucks worth, you know the the cube and the dollar. And then Jen reveal we all reveal at the same time, and Jen reveals nothing. She decided she didn't want to spend any money. And so anyway, I have now lost five hundred bucks, but I have held on to first place or first player status. And Jen didn't pay anything because well, quite frankly, because she didn't want to take the chance of losing. If she didn't bid enough, all that money would be just thrown away. So it's a very, very tough choice to make. And Jen decided to heck with it. She'll be happy going second. All right. That's the first thing that's done every round is we have the bid for turn order. That's done. Now we can actually move on to the worker placement portion of our game. Everybody in this game has two vice presidents, these little markers, two, two vice presidents of their mining corporation. And we are now going to do Kayla style worker placement where each of us will take a turn placing a worker, but nobody will do anything until all the stuff is placed. And since I grab first player, I get first dibs. And as you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five, Five, six. In a two-player game, there are six places I can put my worker. Of course, if I flip these boards over, like if I switch this board over, 
you can see suddenly that goes from only two spaces to three spaces. So, you know, the game is very, very expandable with more players. But anyway, so I'm going to take my first president and I'm going to put him over in this spot, which gives me the ability to issue bribes. Okay, and so now Jen, she gets to place one as well. And the only place she can't go is bribery, of course. What is she going to do? I think the first thing she will do is... She'll come down here. There's three sections of this board. You can see it's actually three different boards. There's this board down here where you can see there's two actions we can go. This is all about upgrading your mining crews, making them more powerful, and also, if you want to, scoring points by deliver, you know, fulfilling delivery contracts. You know, this is worth, if I give up two silver, that's worth two points. If I give up two copper, that's worth one point, and so on. And the, these are first come, first serve. The first player to deliver these gets the, the chits that are, you know, the tokens that are up top. As you go deeper and deeper, the return on these chips gets worse and worse and worse. So you really do want to get in there early if you can. And so Jen, she um, put her first worker here where you'll get to see she will get to do four actions on this board. And those actions are basically related to upgrading her operation and also making deliveries. Okay, so now I get to place one more worker. And the one place I cannot place him, because you cannot place more than one of your workers on board. So I cannot put my worker over here onto the other space. I have to put my vice president either over here into the first financial or over here. And I think I'll put over here too so that I, Jen was the first here, she's going to get to do four upgrade shipping actions. I only get to do two. And now Jen's last worker... She's got two choices. She can either come over here so she can hire contractors, but these guys can be pretty expensive, so she's not going to bother with them. She's instead going to come down here to the bank, I guess, or the you know the uh, the the financial board, and she will get to do up to four financial actions as well. You know, buying and selling cubes for money, and that's it. We are done. And I have taken advantage of well, you know, I got what I wanted. I paid my five hundred bucks so that I could do bribery. Jen ended up getting something equally nice, more actions than me. Anyway, so we're now done with the second phase, which is the worker placement. Now, we move on to the meat of the game. We're done with the worker placement, and so now we're actually going to start mining. And so we take this little thing that keeps track of how much mining we're going to do this round, because we actually get to do four mining actions, and we have to keep track of it. Oh, let's see. Oh, one other thing. Because I took this space, you can see how there's a little number one here and a number two there. Because I took this space, that means I become the first player in mining order. I will get to act before Jen did. If, you know, if I had taken this space and Jen had taken this space, then Jen would be first and I'd be second. But as it is, I get to mine first. All right. So anyway, so we're about to start mining. But before we do, there's the first step is if we want, we can buy some insurance because it's very, very possible. In fact, it's very likely. 30% of the time when you actually excavate these tiles here, you know, like this, this uh, level three tile here, or heck, this level 10 tile way down here, close to the center of the earth. Every time you excavate a tile, there is a one in three chance of an industrial accident that could cause you to lose um, your most valuable cubes that you got from that tile because of the accident. But if you want, you can buy insurance before you, before you start digging. And everybody has the opportunity to do it right now. You can buy as many as you want. And the way you buy insurance is you give up cubes. And for every cube you give up, doesn't matter what type it is, for every cube you give up, you get an insurance chip. And I think I will. I'm going to go on ahead. I don't want to take any chances. I'm going to spend two, my, my last two nickel or zinc or whatever, and I'm going to buy two insurance. And these are secret too. They all go behind my, you know, my secret thing. And now Jen, is she going to? She is going to live risky. She's going to take a chance and she's not going to buy any insurance. She's going to keep all of her cubes so she can use them for other stuff. I mean, because remember, she's, she's down here on this board. She's going to want to have access to cubes because maybe she's going to want to sell them to get more money so that when we get to this section, she can spend that money to buy a lot of upgrades. So Jen's taking a chance and hoping that one in three will not bite her. Not with that. She's not going to take that much of a chance. She'll buy one. She'll buy one insurance. Okay. So we have now finished our insurance, and now we move on to the first of four mining actions. Jen and I will mine, as will the dummy player, and then Jen and I will mine again, as the little dummy player, and three times and four times. So, 
there's gonna be four mining actions. And now mining actions are really simple. All they are is, and I'm the first player, remember I, 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 because I put this space here, I get to go first. What I do is I pick one of my four crews and I move them one space. That's it, that's all I do. And so I will move one of my crews, and then Jen will move one of her crews, and then the um, white player, the dummy player, will move one of his crews. And what we're trying to do is to actually excavate these areas, like if I wanted to excavate this area, you know, th this tile, and we wanted to flip it to see what it's gonna generate. We, there has to be a combined total mining crew power of five on this tile. And what that translates to is, you know, I, you know I, I moved one of my guys over here, Jen moved one of her guys over here, the uh, dummy player moved a guy over, I moved a second guy, but even still, that's only a total of four mining power. We need to have five mining power to actually excavate this uh, geometry. But one of the things you could do is maybe I would upgrade my crew. Now he's level two, and that means because there's a total of one, two, three, four, five, we would we would excavate this tile, and everybody who is involved gets a share of what we find. And since I had more power than anybody else, I would get the majority share. But we'll worry about that in a second. But that's basically what we're going to do. Each of us is going to move our crew around four times, trying to maneuver in such a way that we can be have an advantage when these tiles are revealed. So I'm the first player. I will go on ahead and I will take this guy and I will move him here. That was my first mining action. Now Jen is going to do one as well. And I guess she will follow suit. She will jump in here also. So if this level three mining tile gets revealed, you know, because we get three power on it total, Jen wants to get a piece of the action. So she's in here too. So we are now basically working together to expose this mine. And now, this only happens in a two player game. With three or four players, it doesn't happen. But in a two player game, now the dummy player, the white player will move. And the white player, or whichever color you choose for the dummy player, has a, a little AI priority scheme that he goes through to determine which one of his crews he will move. And it's really actually, well, it's a, it seems at first glance fairly complex. There's like four prioritization steps he goes through, and then he goes through a whole bunch more steps to determine, these four steps determine which one will move, and then this paragraph determines where it will move to. So, and basically first and foremost, Al, the AI player, will always move a crew that has not come into play yet um, or is on a subterranean tile that's already revealed. Now, as it happens, all four of Al's tiles have not come into play. They're all outside of the mine. So, we know Al is going to do one of those four. So that first prioritization didn't help us. Second prioritization is, if there's multiple eligible crews, there are, the eligible crews with the highest power is moved. Now all of Al's crew at the beginning of the game are level one. So again, we have not figured out which one, so we have to move on to the next one. If there's still multiple eligible crews, the eligible crew in the shallowest stratum, furthest away from the center of the earth is moved. And wouldn't you know it, all of Al's pieces are equally far away. And so, the final tiebreaker is, if there's still eligible crews, the player with the, um, first in control order decides which crew. And so, I am first in control order, so at this first turn, that's another thing. When I was bidding high, not only did I get access to bribery, but I also got access to controlling the white player if there needs to be a tie broken. And there does need to be. So what am I going to have the white player do? Now, I could just have Al move in here. You know, I, you know I, I, could, I could choose this one, and then boom, we would actually, all three of us would work together, we would excavate this, but here's the problem. Um, there, there's often, there's almost always an excess there, you know, where one player is going to get more than everybody else. And the, the way that the, 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 normally, the player who gets the, uh, the extra, the bonus, is the one whoever has the most power. So if it were like this, you know, if, you know, if I put a two here and then Jen put a one, then because I had two and Jen had one, I would be the dominant player and I would get more stuff. If there is no clear, okay, I've got more power here than you, then the tiebreaker is whoever initiated the dig. And in this case, Al would initiate the dig, and that means Al would get the bonus. The AI would get the bonus. I don't want that to happen. I want to, I want to manipulate things so that I'm the one who's going to get the bonus. And so what I think that means I'm going to do is I will have, 
I will not have Al come in here. I'm going to try and maneuver things so that I can be the one who finishes it off. I will have Al, yeah, now remember, I, I get to choose. Al, I could choose any of the four because it's, it's an even break. They're all level ones, they're all equidistant away, and so I choose. I'll have this dummy player move. All right, we have finished our first round of digging. Now we move on to the next round. And I'm the first player, so I get to go again. Let's see, I think I will take, um, now I, I could have this guy move again if I wanted, but, oh, by the way, I should have said, um, when I, I chose this was the dumb, this was the, the crew that the dummy player was gonna move, I did not get to choose which of these two spaces he went to. The dummy player, once it's chosen which one, well, you know, which, uh, which crew is going to move? The dummy player always moves to the tile that has the, that is closest to being revealed. And a three is closer to being revealed than a four because you only need three power instead of four. So that's why the dummy player moved there. Okay. But if if there was an, if there was a tie, like say Jen was here, now if the, if this dummy player had to choose whether to go over here, which requires three power, or whether to go over here, which requires three power, four minus one is three. Then again, I would have gotten to choose which way that dummy moved. But as it is, the dummy moved here because he went to the uh, the place that was closest to flipping. All right, so we've done our first round. Now on to the second round. I could move this guy again. I can move my other guys. I'm going to move this guy into this level four. Um, zone. Okay. And now, I think, again, Jen does not want to miss out on, you know, on, on a tile. So she'll follow suit. So she's going to be here. So again, if this tile gets revealed, she'll get a piece of it. And, um, right. So now it is Al's turn. And once again, I can determine, um, well, let's see, I have to go through the, the same logic. Uh, first question is, are there any guys who are not in active areas? Al has three guys that are not in active areas. Are there any that are greater power? Nope, they're all the same. Are there any that are further away? Nope, they're all the same. So once again, I get to choose one of, this guy will not move because he's been eliminated because he is closer to the center of the earth. So one of these three guys is going to move now. And if I wanted, I could go on ahead and move Al here, and then we would all get the uh, benefit. But again, Al would have been the one who triggered it, and I don't want that to happen. So, I think I'm going to have another Al move. He's going to come out over here. All right. So, we now move on to our third round of mining. And again, I'm the first player, and now things are going to get interesting. Yes. Are they? Oh, gracious. I didn't think about that. What am I going to do? Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, here we go. I am going to, I, I, I move and then Jen moves and then Al moves, right? So first of all, I'm going to move. This guy who I put over here for, I'm going to move him over here now. And remember how I mentioned, because I put my vice president here, I have the, op, I have the option to bribe. I'm going to do a bribe. The way the bribe works is after you have made your move, and your move could be just standing still if you want. You don't have to actually move. But after one of your crews is activated, that crew could then bribe other crews that are in uh, an adjacent space in the mine. So this guy moved over here, and now he can bribe either Al or Jen. And I am going, and I get, because there, you can see there's these three bribery tokens, I have a chance to bribe up to three times during this whole process. So I'm going to use one of my bribes. It just gets removed, so there's only two bribes left. This guy moved over here. I'm going to initiate a bribe, and I'm going to bribe Al's, you know, the dummy player's worker to move in to this space. Okay, and now the bribery doesn't cost me anything because it's, it's a really small bribery. It's not like I'm bribing the, you know, Al's company. I'm just, you know, giving an extra hundred bucks to this mining crew saying, hey, just move over here. And so I bribed them over here. I didn't have to pay anything other than, you know, I had to, I had to pay high to be able to get to be, to go there first, to get the powerful bribery. And now, as you can see, there are one, there's a total of four power on this mine. And I have the most power, as you can see. I've got two, so I'm going to get the bonus. So whenever a tile gets enough mining crew power on it to be mined, the game pauses. Everything freezes, and we flip the tile and deal with it. So let's go ahead and flip the tile. Let's see. And we have to remember, this was my turn, so it's going to be Jen's turn next. But right now, it's my turn. And we flip the tile. And 
Now this was a level four tile, so we come over here, you can see there, there's a card stack for two, three, four, five, there's a card stack for every tile on the board. We are at level four, so I'll just go ahead and draw the top four card, and let's see what all of us get. All three of us are gonna divide this as equally as we can. What did we get? Okay, there are three of us. The, the, the payout was three nickel, two copper, and five silver, no gold. All right. So this is the payout, and since there are three of us involved, the first thing you do is, we as equally as possible divvy it up. So, that means everybody gets a blue, I get a blue, Jen gets a blue, the dummy player gets a blue, but he doesn't care because he's not keeping track, so that just goes away. Now, we cannot evenly divide the copper, so we put that to the side. Now let's even divide the silver. I get one, Jen gets one, the dummy player gets one, and now there's two left over. So here's the leftover that you know, we could not divide amongst us. The leftover goes to whoever is the dominant mining crew. And in this case, it's me because I've got two and everybody else has one. So I got four additional cubes. And this is a big deal. That's um, 600 plus 600 plus 400. That's, this is 2,000 bucks worth of cubes I got. And the reason I did is because I was able to use the bribery to force the thing you know, to happen when I was in charge. Boom. And so that was it. That was my third mining operation. I had a huge bonus. Now, Jen got some too. She was in the neighborhood. You know, she didn't necessarily lose out, but I, you know, I definitely am the one who came out on top. And um, we continue on. So it's Jen's turn, and now she's got to decide what is she going to do next. I mean, she might take this purple, move it over here, but then, um, you know, and then once again, I will get to choose because I have the tiebreaker, which of these two white ones move, and then I would go again for my final one. Now, if we can, it's interesting, there's this one still over here that could still happen. But, you know, so Jen's gonna have to decide which crew is she gonna move around, and, um, you know, and then I have to decide for Al, and then we all get one more, and then we'll be done with the mining, and then we move on to the financial stuff and the upgrades. And now, if you'd like, uh, you can go on ahead and hit the button that's on screen right now for extended play, and I will demonstrate. Uh, you know, I'll finish up this digging, and I'll try to demonstrate um, at least one more round. You know, I'll show you the financial stuff, the upgrading stuff, and I'll probably do at least one more round because one thing I haven't shown you is how the contractors work, because nobody bought the contractors. So if you'd like to see the rest of this game, you can hit the button that's on screen for extended play right now, or you can hit the other button for final thoughts. But hopefully, you have a basic idea. This is a semi-cooperative game. We're all playing a game of brinksmanship and one-upsmanship, trying to be in the right place at the right time to benefit from all this mining we're doing. And if you'd like to watch some more of it, you can hit the button in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.